says in the Quran, asking them, أَتَبْنُونَ بِكُلِّ رِيعٍ آيَةً تَعْبَثُونَ وَتَتَّخِذُونَ مَصَانِعَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَخْرُدُونَ Meaning, do you build on every mountain or hill a big palace, a home? And this is in reference to what they used to do. These people, they would build palaces or big homes on top of hills, small mountains, and they wouldn't even live in them. It was just monuments to show off their skill. Ta'bathun, Arab. They didn't even use them. And the scholars in Islam, they say this shows that when a person, sometimes when they get too much wealth, wealth is a fitna. So if you don't use that wealth in a good way, then shaitan will come and try to make you use it in a bad way. And then Allah said, Meaning that these people, they would build their houses in amazing ways. They would fortify their houses as if they would live there forever. That they would never die. And this obviously, it led to arrogance. It led to arrogance. They had money, they had wealth, they had whatever they wanted. So much so that it is documented in the Quran that they said, Man ashaddu minna huwa. They reached this level of arrogance. That when Hud told them that if you don't stop the ship, then Allah's punishment will come, their reply to Hud was, Man ashaddu minna huwa. Who is stronger than us? And Allah Azza wa Jalla responded to them. Don't they know that Allah Azza wa Jalla, the one that created them, who ashad minhum huwa, that Allah Azza wa Jalla is much stronger than them. So this shows to the level that these people took these uh, blessings. And blessings, the scholars in Islam, they say, Whatever a person gets, can a blessing can turn into a curse, something that you regret. A ni'mah can become a ni'mah, depending on how you use it. Let's say you have a new job, you have a new house, or something simple, you buy a new phone. That phone can become a blessing. You can do a lot of play with it. But if you don't utilize it in the way that it's supposed to be used, then it becomes a nikmah, a curse. How so? It becomes something that you regret later on. On the Day of Judgment, whatever you watch, whatever you type, whatever you said that you weren't supposed to do, it will become evidence against you. So these people, they fell into that trap. And we see that happening all the time. Human beings, as soon as they get a little bit of wealth and money and power, they think that they're untouchable. <coughs> um, over a hundred years ago, when they built uh, the biggest boat at that time, they gave it a specific name. Titanic. And the people that were building it, they said, because they didn't believe in just one God, they believed in gods, so they said, not even the gods can sink this ship. That's what they said. And then what happened? On its maiden voyage, the first time it set sail with the people, it went down. And it shows us that, subhanAllah, if you really think about it, how small human beings are in comparison to other creation. You can even go on these uh, videos where they show 
when they zoom out from the person, right? You're standing in a place, you move up, you see the city you live in, you move up, you see the county or the, the area, the province, you move beyond that, you see the country, and then you keep going, keep going, and you start realizing, subhanAllah, just one person, how insignificant that one person is. Yet these people, they reach that level of arrogance that they even try to make it seem that they were the most powerful. So Allah Azza wa Jalla wanted to teach them a lesson. They didn't believe. And they opposed the, the Prophet that was sent to them. Hud alayhi salam in the Quran it says, كَذَّبَتْ عَادُنِ الْمُنْسَنِينَ and the people of Hud, they disbelieved in the messengers. They disbelieved in the messengers. How many messengers were sent to them? Just one. Hud. But Allah Azza wa Jalla says, كَذَّبَتْ عَادُ لِلْمُسَلِينَ that, that, and that the people of Ad, they disbelieved in all the messengers. Even though just one messenger was sent to them. And the scholars in Islam, they say, this shows that if a person disbelieves in one prophet, it is like that person has disbelieved in all the prophets. Because the message of the prophets is one and the same, Tawheed. You can't pick and choose, you can't say, you know, I, I want to believe in all the prophets except Musa or I want to believe in all the prophets except Isa So these people, they disbelieve. And Hud warned them. And Allah Azza wa Jal sent down a, a, a drought. It didn't rain for a long time. It didn't rain for a long time. And the people, they started getting thirsty and their animals were dying. And Hud alayhi salam, he tried to remind the people, saying, come back, turn back to Allah. They should have become, they should have realized that this was the time to return back to Allah. But instead, what happened was, it only increased them in their tuqiyam, uh, in their disobedience. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a cloud to them. This is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Ahqaf that they saw a cloud, big cloud, dark cloud, coming towards them. They were living in their valley, right? So this cloud was coming, and they thought to themselves, this cloud bears rain. They said, this is cloud that will give us rain. But in reality, it was the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they try to belittle and make fun of. And when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down to these people, it came down in a very strong way. Allah Azza wa says that He sent to them Rih, a wind, but not just any wind. Rih, salsa. It means a very cold wind, piercing coldness. And this wind will destroy everything in this path. To them we will call the Every single thing. You know, today when we see in the news tornadoes, right? or hurricanes, when they hit, how long does it, how long does a tornado uh, stay in a particular place? Just a few minutes if most, and it makes its way through the city or through the place. And what is the consequence of that? It's utter destruction. Homes are lost. Lives are lost. Right? Imagine such a wind 
Even worse than that, and Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا That Allah Azza wa Jal sent this type of wind on these people for seven nights and eight days. Seven nights and eight days. Husuma, non-stop. It destroyed them completely. To such an extent that even today there's no traces of Ad. Of the Thamud, yes, we can see the Madan, Madain Saleh and the buildings that the Thamud left behind. But the Ad, there, they were wiped out, uh, uh, off history. If it wasn't for the Quran telling us about these people, we wouldn't be able to know. People are still trying to find their houses. People are still trying to locate where they actually lived. And Allah Azza wa Jalla is describing their buildings. What does he what does Allah Azza wa Jalla say? Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi'ad. Have you not seen how your Lord dealt with the people of Ad? Iram adatil ibad. Iram a name of a city, some scholars say, that Al-Imad, that had a lot of pillars. There is no equal to this city in the whole world, Allah is telling us. Nothing could compare to this city of Iran. Yet, where is this city Iran now? Even non-Muslim historians, they say, yes, history documents, people write about this amazing city. But they re re refer to it as a lost city. You know how you hear stories about uh, Atlantis and, you know, these places? They say Iran is one of those places. It's a lost city. The only evidence that it existed is historical mentions. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, He asks, asks us a question in the Quran. فَهَلْ 